We think at the present time, though, that organ perfusion is going to give an organ of better functional quality than simple cold storage will. And this will allow more time for the team to be assembled, for the operation of transplantation to be fitted into the schedule of the operating room in the given hospital in that particular day, and may reduce the demands of postoperative dialysis and postoperative care by giving a better functional organ from the start. And at the present time, I think the capability is unique to this geographic area in that we have this ability with this machine to go to the uh, area and pick up the kidneys and put them on perfusion right away in the operating room rather than transporting them in a bucket of slush or ice uh, across the country for several hours and several hundred miles. The number of these donors, uh, while there are a lot of people die in Dallas uh, every day, the number that we get called on is much less than the number of patients we have waiting. The present time we have approximately uh, 25 patients waiting right now who could receive a kidney today if one became available. Secretary Folge, now that we are winding down our forces in Vietnam, what kind of a role will the U.S. be playing after the first of the year? After the first of the year, we will uh, be playing a role of offering support in certain technical areas for the South Vietnamese. We still have a substantial amount of equipment in Southeast Asia. We will have to take the necessary steps to either turn that equipment over to the South Vietnamese or return it to continental USA. Which way do you see us going? Just donating the equipment? Well, it will vary. Uh, vary depending upon the need of the South Vietnamese and, more importantly, depending upon our need. Well, Mr. Secretary, are we currently engaged in any kind of active combat role? Our combat role is that whatever is necessary to protect our own men, but as uh, both the President and Secretary Laird have stated, we no longer are in an active state where we do anything of a combat nature other than protective.
necessary to do the job out at Carlin's Radio. Now here's the little boy, the same thing as Quasar right here that works in the drawer. The little white handle that you see right here, this is... This particular program, which is our youth motivation program, uh, is designed to keep the ninth graders uh, in school who graduate from high school to get a job. Uh, the booths are set up in such a fashion as to show that when you graduate from high school, there is room in industry for you. You don't need a college education. Uh, we'd like them to go to college, but if they graduate from high school, we have a job for them. Uh, is to keep the kids from dropping out. Did anything you heard or saw today make any sense to you or change what you do? Yes, it did. I think that it's very important. Uh, I think that uh, going to school and what they're talking about now is very important. And we really should pay attention to it and listen to it. Because it really, it really will help us in the future. Did you ever plan to drop out or thought about it yourself? Yes, but after listening to them, I know that I'd just be lost if I did. I'm afraid that I have been misinterpreted about my intent to remain here in Dallas as Chief of Police, and I want to, once and, all, once and for all, to put all rumors to bed that I do not intend to leave Dallas as Chief of Police. My position here is as strong, my commitment is as keen as it ever has been in terms of remaining as Chief of Police in the city of Dallas. I fully intend to remain here to see my programs implemented and become successful, and I have no intentions of moving some other place for another law enforcement job. I've also been informed by the city attorney to the effect that, in his opinion, if we do go to state civil service, that college incentive pay would not be permitted under the provisions of state statute 1269 M. That is the official ruling of the city attorney. No, we haven't. Uh, probably they haven't had an opportunity to react, really, because uh, the police chief uh, only received, or it was only sent to him uh, yesterday afternoon late. Uh, we sent the report to the city council uh, this morning, probably be in their packets tonight. So we have not uh, had any response and didn't expect any. This there have been a lot of demands and a lot of recommendations made in Fort Worth the last few weeks. Do you have any concern that perhaps there are too many, that you may get some overreaction? Well, don't, uh, uh, don't connect me with the 38 or 40 demands. Uh, we, we, we came out, I think, with about 11 recommendations uh, relating to uh, police activity, but uh, there is a lot of activity going on. A part of, I guess, some of the recommendations that are being made uh, may be in, in part response to some of the demands which are being made. We've been working on this for a long time. I think that, uh, uh, that there is that possibility. However, uh, it seems to me that as long as requests are reasonable and logical, that uh, the general public will respond fairly well to them. No, I feel that they will. I feel, though, that uh, there was some stalling today at the Human Resources Committee meeting of the Board of Education, and we would like a clear statement of position by the Dallas Independent School District and a clear statement of what action they intend to take to achieve equity for our teachers as far as their salary schedules are concerned for this school year.
Well, I meant that uh, a number of things. Number one, that we probably are eventually going to become accustomed to the fact that there is such a thing as recreational use of drugs. That is the use of drugs because people want to. The use of drugs as we use alcohol. The use of marijuana to get high as some people use alcohol to get high. Now we don't like that, but I said we've got to come to this conclusion that in our society there is such a thing as the recreational use of drugs. And that when we realize this point, that I think we're going to take a more common sense approach in solving the problem and it's going to come closer to solving it. And I think that this is the important thing. And I think that we're going to have to come to a more common sense approach in handling the penalty structure in dealing with young people. This is the beginning of what we have seen at, at the federal level in the change in the laws for penalties there. I don't know what that means. As I mentioned before, I think that uh, some states are already taking another look at it, such as Nebraska with its you know, seven days in, the, uh, in jail. But this is the road we've got to get to in understanding the drug problem, the drug user himself, and what do we do with him, if anything. Depending on city council action, these gates into the Fort Worth Zoo may soon be replaced with a ticket booth. Now, actor Jimmy Stewart thinks it's a good idea for zoos to charge admission. I know because his wife told me so. Mrs. Jimmy Stewart's in Fort Worth today visiting friends. She's on the board of directors of the Los Angeles Zoo, so she likes to visit animal collections wherever she goes. Mrs. Stewart shared with newsmen her thoughts on the concept of gate charges to visit zoos. So you don't think then that a zoo charge in general is an intrinsic evil? Good heavens, no, man. I think it's just the opposite. I think it's evil to let the animals sit in a little box out there. That's evil. Mrs. Stewart doesn't claim to be an authority on the Fort Worth situation, but she does say that since Fort Worth has one of the top ten zoological parks in the country, it's a shame to endanger its financial position. At least, that's what she thinks. And so does Jimmy. J. Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. also like to announce that uh, contrary to the information that's being circulated now, it will require rather than a 10% vote of the qualified voters of the last preceding municipal election, it will require 20% of the qualified voters of the last municipal election. The requirements of this statute, 1269M, clearly state that if an election has been held at any time in the past, and whether it was rejected or approved in terms of state civil service for police and fire, then another election requires 20% of the voters rather than 10. Well, now, uh, Chief, would this, uh, would this would a vote for state civil service or change your mind in any way about your decision to follow through with your program? Well, that's the point I think that's brought about the confusion. And the statement I made is this, that if at any time I feel that I can no longer be effective as the administrator of this department, if I in fact have been so restricted that I cannot make a contribution to my profession, and, if, and in fact if I become a, a mere figurehead, then I would have no desire to remain in this job or any other job. Would this curtail your effectiveness? Well, and that's another point I made yesterday. I'm not sure. I think that it would. But I think we're going to have, I'm going to have to have some legal and policy questions answered for me before I could determine uh, how much it would affect my, my effectiveness as a police administrator. So there's some questions yet to be answered. Well, I think the, the most important thing in the uh, working game will be errors. There'll be turnovers. Uh, when you play a George Allen team, you play a team that, that is executing very simply on offense to cut down errors. They're, they're looking for turnovers on defense. So you must counter these two things. You must be able to stop them offensively from the type of percentage plays they play, and you've got to be able to cut down your own errors. 
And if you can do that, then you can hold your own. Hope you don't. Bob, in terms of your preparation for this game, do you, obviously there is a great degree of significance in this confrontation. Do you approach, do you personally approach the preparation any different than you do, say, for last week against uh, against uh, Philadelphia? Yeah, I've learned. You always, uh, I, I, at least I do. I've always been the, what I, you know, I've always thought of myself kind of the pressure ball player. I, I always seem to prepare a little harder for the good teams or the teams that are in contention, and I always seem to play a little better whenever there's something at stake. And I, I know that as far as I'm concerned, I'll probably prepare myself much better than I have for some other games. Uh, that doesn't mean that I won't uh, work. I haven't worked just as hard, but it's just the little things that I'll check and recheck and uh, that I may not do sometimes. But uh, It sounds I, like there's a lot of mental preparation that you're talking about. Yeah, that's mainly what it is. You work about the same all the time. I don't think you could work a whole lot harder because you'd get uh, maybe tired enough that you wouldn't be able to play too good on Sunday. But we work pretty hard, and I try to work myself pretty hard, uh, especially when I'm not injured. And I haven't been injured much this year, so I've gotten to work pretty good. But it's mental. It's uh, watching the films and maybe an extra hour, an extra 30 minutes, and just uh, the little things maybe that you should do every week, but you just don't have time. But you just take the time, you know, when the game is of, of this importance. I believe that the odds of, on having a common draft this year are very, very slim. Uh, the we believe that the uh, Senate subcommittee will report uh, the legislation out favorably, but that will take, it couldn't happen uh, much before about February 1st or January 15th at the earliest. Then the full committee has to report it to the floor. Uh, then we have to get a vote in the Senate, and then we have to go to the House. And if you use uh, the middle of March as the traditional uh, drafting period, uh, the odds are not good. Would you move back that drafting period if you saw legislation about to be passed? If the uh, merger legislation was imminent, if we'd gotten a, a favorable vote in the Senate and had good progress in the House, there's no reason that we couldn't move the uh, draft back uh, a while. But there are no plans uh, at this point to change uh, any of our drafting procedures, which, as you know, have changed from year to year. Well, uh, Jerry, I think the uh, team that makes the fewest mistakes will win the ball game. How have your mistakes been this year? Have you played pretty good uh, football, percentage-wise, mistakes? We've been very, very lucky. We have a senior ball club, and uh, they have made a few mistakes, but uh, we've been able to take advantage of the mistake, mistakes that the opposition has made. Uh, who would you say forms uh, the nucleus of your club, your outstanding players? Well, we have uh, overall fine football team we think of course uh, our quarterback joe russ has done a tremendous job for us this year along with our running back mike baker and the entire line has done a tremendous job blocking for him is there any uh, particular individual or any type of uh, maneuver of what white has that you're going to have to concentrate on they have a well-drilled football team jerry they throw the ball real well and they run a Houston beer, which is hard to defense. But we, uh, we're going to be out there trying. What kind of a game do you think it'll be then? A uh, wide open game? I know you said a team that makes the fewest mistakes. But uh, really, what, what type of a game do you expect? They're very explosive. They have a, a fast football team. And uh, we play more conservative than they do. They throw the ball more than we have this year. Although we are capable of throwing the ball. and. Uh, we may just have to throw it or try. We have four junior college players coming in and four players off of our freshman ball club last year and four returning lettermen from our ball club. So we have eight new players on the varsity 
for this year. So I think that's our biggest problem is finding out what these players can do and fitting them together in some system that can best take advantage of their abilities and talents. Well, are you going to squander a game or two in, uh, in trying to put some sort of an attack together? Well, we, we hope not, but we're not as far along as we were last year at this point. And we have an awfully strong non-conference schedule, starting out with Western Kentucky, and they finished third in the nation last year in the national tournament. So we have a real strong schedule, and we're somewhat inexperienced as far as, as our players playing on the varsity level. Our junior college players have played a lot, but I think the, the level they're playing on and the, the teams they're playing, are, it's going to be a different environment, a different situation for them. And, so it's going to take us a little time to put this ball club together. We'll probably try several different combinations and different things early in the year to try to really get ourselves ready for the conference race in January. Today was career day at J.N. Irvin Junior High School. This winds up a program which included nine target area junior high schools in Dallas. The program is a cooperative effort of some 18 private Dallas companies who are trying to offer an answer for the growing number of high school dropouts. Minority employees from the National Alliance of Businessmen are the student motivators. Booths are set up by various companies in each of the selected schools, allowing these businessmen to talk with students on a one-to-one -one basis. The gist of their message is to stay in school. I talked with one of the students and the chairman of the Dallas-Fort Worth Plans for Progress Committee, which implements the program on a local level. I asked Mr. W.R. Ersthaler what the youth program offers.
this particular program, which is our youth motivation program, uh, is designed to keep the ninth graders uh, in school, to graduate from high school, to get a job. Uh, the booths are set up in such a fashion as to show that when you graduate from high school, there is room in industry for you. You don't need a college education. Uh, we'd like them to go to college, but if they graduate from high school, we have a job for them. Uh, is to keep the kids from dropping out. Did anything you heard or saw today make any sense to you or change what you do? Yes, it did. I think that it's very important. Uh, I think that uh, going to school and what they're talking about now is very important. And we really should pay attention to it and listen to it. Because it really, it really will help us in the future. Did you have a plan to drop out or thought about it yourself? Yes, but after listening to them, I know that I'd just be lost if I did.